Well, with only a minimal, minimal amount of fighting, I was able to get that synchronized nicely so that the film advance is released for rewinding at the same point the shutter fires. Now I'm looking at my frame counter on the top of the camera and I need to get that adjusted correctly. It's throwing slightly too far. In other words, the numbers aren't coming up e evenly there. I'll lift the top, pop it back down. I want to know which way I'm going to move here. My meter is doing its best to wriggle away there. I don't want that to happen. I think that I can... Let's have a look at the state of this. I think I can adjust this screw in because I think that's throwing too far rather than not far enough. Let's try that. Yeah, my lines are nicely centred there now. So that looks good. I've got to do my meter. I've got to lock the cord on the meter so that the meter is set correctly for the uh, settings at the front of the camera so it reads correctly. Right, so I need to get this adjusted and I'll set that up against my light source and hopefully that'll, I don't know that it'll actually be accurate, I suspect most likely it will not because most of these selenium cell meters are now too old, and do not work well. But I'll just check on the off chance that it does work, in which case I'll set it correctly. The meter seems to work reasonably well. The cord's just slipping on the drum. I'd marked it where it was to be correctly placed, the cord relative to the drum. Now I've got to rotate this round here until the notches on the bottom of the drum come into play so that I can get the cord hooked into the notches of the drum correctly. Looking for those notches. There they are. And I'm looking for my alignment mark that I made, which is right around there. So I need to move a bit further with my cord. Check my alignment marks again. I marked this with a marker pen so I know when the two are in alignment. This is always somewhat fraught. There's always the opportunity here to dislodge the meter and it just becomes an utter disaster trying to get things hooked up. I may even have to alter another body top in order to me allow me to hold the meter firmly down on the camera while I'm at accessing the back of this drum here where I've got to pull the cord out and get it tucked down into notches into that in that drum there. To say it's awkward is an understatement. Well today must be my lucky day because that that's moving correctly and it reads pretty accurately over a two or three stop range. I didn't test it any further than that but it's as good as any I've seen lately. So I'll take that top cover off. I need to put a meter button in place now because it's got no meter setting button. I have a replacement button here. Let's find one that's relatively clean. and I have a spring. I 
little return spring goes in the centre the button goes on the top I'm just going to wipe over that top of that meter there to remove fingerprints the glass I've already moved, I've already cleaned that I'm checking my range finder to make sure I haven't fingerprinted it top cover looks clean The, uh, something's gone bang here, what's gone wrong is my film release button is shifted something's out of whack, oh, that shutter release button had shifted there we go, top cover in place I'll put the screw in the end We want two chrome screws for this end of the top panel. Since we don't have any, we've only got nickel plated ones because they were missing. Let's see if I've got some chrome plated screws of the right size. Yeah, it's not wonderful, but it's a lot better than nothing. Now yeah, that can't have been the right size. What's that screw from then? Tell me I can't find a chrome plated screw when you need one. Oh, I'm going to have to do search wire further afield I think. Hmm. I must have been too enthusiastic at replacing ugly ones. Back when I find the screws. Emergency over, I was able to find a pair of screws. Let's pop that up. Put our rewind knob on the top. Drop that down, put something through the fork, tighten that up. Check the screw at the other end of the top plate. So the top plate, the top cover's on. That's all good. At the base of the camera, I need to put my proper full length base plate on there. Because at the moment, it's not. And I have that all cleaned up and ready to go. So let's remove that film advance lever. Take off this temporary cover. Put our original cover in place. These screws are somewhat chewed up. It's not uncommon for them to be damaged because usually they're covered in glue. So they're not always easy to get unscrewed, both because the screwdriver is not likely to 
the slot in the screw is likely to be clogged with glue so that it's difficult to get a handle on the screw and also because the screw is very likely to be hard to remove because it's effectively been glued in place. So it's not uncommon for these to be awkward to get off and as a result it's fairly common for them to be a bit chewed up looking by the time they are off. And I want one more which I don't have there. Let's get a replacement for the missing screw. Here's one. So the leatherettes. It's just about leatherette time. A leatherette for the base of this game. Oh, we're putting new leatherettes on, aren't we? Okay. All right. Let's get going then. This is the aftermarket set of leatherettes that I'm going to use. Just wipe away a few greasy marks there. Now there should be a little plate like that sitting at that point and I think I've got it somewhere, or I have. So I'll just put that on in place with a touch of adhesive first. On a reflex camera, that's where you would make the adjustment for your reflex mirror. The 3S shares the body casting with the reflex S. Okay, that's done. Here's my leatherette for the base. It looks okay, it's possibly cut a bit small. I'll peel the backing off it and stick it down. Yeah, that needs to be stretched out slightly. Fortunately, it's reasonably elastic, but it certainly could fit better than that. Put the advance lever back in place. And the patch on the rewind, on the advance lever rather. Let's get that in place.
That looks nice. The back catch release cover was missing on this camera from memory. I'll just check, see if there is any sign of one. I don't think there is. It was, after all, a bit of a casualty when it arrived. So I'll find a back catch cover and we'll put that in place. Right, well I've got some parts here. Some parts are new. Some parts are used. Let's see if I can get this assembled. It springs a bit enthusiastic. See if we can get that tucked in there and get it to stay. catching on something, it might be the thickness of the leatherette. Let me get that other screw in there and we'll just check what's going on. Oh that's fine now. So there's our back catch cover in place. Leatherettes on the base of the camera. Yeah they certainly leaves a bit to be desired that leatherette. It may be because it's pre the adhesive, the self-adhesive stuff makes it awkward to get on. Um, it certainly appeared to be slightly small. It needed to be stretched out in order to fit. And that was a nuisance. The leatherettes for the front of the camera. Will they fit? Let's find out. It looks like they're slightly small again. They do not tuck under the edge of that body moulding there. And they should. Okay. So, there's certainly a problem with these leatherettes. I'll just check. I may have an original new leatherette somewhere it for that piece I'll find out well here's an original piece of leatherette from a 3S that's a very close match in fact I would say that was identical in size so the panel for that size certainly looks the same as that for a retina 3S of course my original retina 3S leatherette I was just chipped Checking that again could be undersized anyway because leatherettes tend to shrink back with age. Let's see what I can do with this. It's definitely small. It doesn't stretch from top to bottom very well. What if I roll it around from the end? Yeah, it's not a good, it's not a good fit. It's 
It's a sight better than nothing, but that's about all you could say about it. I think that'll do though. I don't think anyone would complain about that. Now my adjustment here, I've just got the opportunity to look at that. Can I get any more tension on that cord? No, that's it, and that's quite good. The little blanking plate that goes over that can go back in place now. Now that was a little bit misshapen when I started. Now I'm not sure why that should be. Maybe just because someone had been pulling and poking at it. So I'll just glue this in place. Just want a little bit of adhesive around the edges where it sits into the recess. We don't want great globs of the stuff getting down in there because it'll end up sticking something that shouldn't be stuck. Just take that out, put that there, put that plate in place. There we have it, so that's that side. Now my leatherette. That one appears to be a better fit than the other side. And in terms of height too, it looks like a closer match. Alright. I'm convinced that one should go. Oh, it's interesting. As soon as I let that off the backing, it changed size. Now that's too long there, it's running up against the edge of that hinge, I'll have to trim that, It's tough to cut. Yeah, that's better. Alright, that's not a bad fit. Okay, well if we ignore this little piece down the front here, where it's in quite good shape. That only leaves me my leatherette to go across the back. And interesting the way this stuff changed shape as soon as it was released from the paper backing. Interesting. There you are. Last piece of the puzzle. The little Kodak emblem on the front. I got the leatherette on the back. I did have to trim it. It was too long. But here's our camera. Now, this one was really just dog tucker when it came in the door. It was a bitzer, pieces were missing, various people had had a go at repairing it and failed, I, I would suppose you could say they'd failed, I don't know whether they really tried to fix it or not, or whether it had just been robbed for parts. But there it is, it's complete now. New leatherettes, aftermarket leatherettes, and it was interesting to discover what they were like, what their strong points are, what their weak points are, and I probably wouldn't be in a hurry to go buying them again. The back door here has been repainted, so it's got no chips on the back door. Well, here we go. I think this is about the third time I've said this, 
my video camera had other ideas about me recording this particular piece. I've got the nameplate back on here, the little Kodak tag here is back in place, I happen to have one. They're a bit thin on the ground, they're not the same size as the ones used on the retinettes. New leatherettes, aftermarket leatherettes, repainted back door, all looking nice and clean and shiny. A fair bit's been replaced on this camera. Starting from the top, what can we say? Well, the three chrome screws that hold the top cover on, they had to be replaced. The meter button, that needed to replace. Uh, the spring underneath the meter button, well, that, was, that needed to be replaced because it was missing. Getting in further, most of the mechanics were still there. That the, but none of the leatherettes, of course, they were pretty much gone. The front pet leatherettes were gone. The base leatherette was gone. The back leatherette was um, okay. That's about all you could say about it. It was certainly there at present and correct. On the inside, well, the coupling. The coupling for the uh, frame selector and the rangefinder, that, that was missing a piece, so that needed to be replaced. Underneath our rewind, this collar here, that was missing, so that needed to be replaced. Um, shutter speed selector ring here. The original one is cracked plastic, so I've replaced that entirely with one from my parts. Not much more to say, probably. Oh, is there a few springs anywhere? No, I don't think it was too bad, this one. So, there we have it. A very nice Retina 3S camera. And this one is, um, it's been given a new lease of life. It was dog tucker when it arrived, but now it's a nice fine example of this camera. It's a very popular model, certainly the, the best Kodak ever made of the Retina range, I would say, if you're looking for a rangefinder camera. And that's it. Thanks for watching.